Introducing the new Onga Ginger Onion and Garlic Powder Seasoning. Now you can give your fish, chicken and beef the unique taste all in just one sauce. Onga. Onga. Mama's helping hand. Yes. Kilo, then I only you walk or come. I wouldn't know what it goes to Sus, but you walk and I come. You are the kilo then I only you wanna come Kilo then what you cause you suits but you work out I come But you work out But you see but you see the mina then yo bum who go keep on who fanta the mina then the villa la win lay the villa the villa la win lay the villa la win lay the villa the villa la win lay the villa la win lay the villa See, I came from the ghetto, came from the streets, came from a place that I would never get this beat. Me, I know the form, it is not in my blood. You can chop your Chinese or granny. Kilo, then I only you want to come. Kilo, what it costs to suit, but you want to come. Kilo, then. Then I only you work a come. Kill your day, but it goes to suit, but you work and I come. But you work and I come. But then I see, but then she came. The mina day, yo. Mamu go keep on mu fanta. The mina day, yo. The villa la wele. The villa. The villa la wele. The villa la wele. The villa. The villa la wele. Welcome, you are watching On Gashos, that weekly show that brings you the very best in wellness tips, health, music, culture, and food. All this and so much more is brought to you by Onga, Mama's Helping Hand. A little helping hand will go a long way to get your meals tasting really delicious. So season your cooking with hunger for that delicious taste and mm, irresistible aroma that will get your loved ones looking forward to mealtimes. Welcome back. You are watching on Gashes, where we're all about healthy living and fun. So let's see what we have for you for this week on aerobics. One, two, three, and squats. Raise your dumbbells, that's it. Two, that's it. Three, four, five, six, seven. Listen and breathe out. Now let's go again. One, thank you. Two, bring it down. That's it. Up again. Good. Bring it down. One. Thank you. And one, two, three, four. Down. That's it. Again. That's it. Are you ready? Let's start from here. Are you ready? Go. One, two, three. Leg up. Pick it up. Good. All the time. Let's go. Thank you. Leg up. Bring it down. Okay, now you take it down. Go. One, two, three. Leg up. Go. That's it. All the way now. Go. Thank you. Bring it down. Squat. Let's go. Up. 
two, three. Now you bring it down. Let's go. Four. Thank you. That's it. Two, three. Now you twist. Go Let's go. One, two, three. On the side. Let's. Go. One, two, three. Take it here now. Go. One, two, three. Four more. Five, six, seven. Thank you. Those have to be the tiniest dumbbells I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. But not that tiny. They How like effective 1 are they? One point five kg or two kg each. Really? Yeah, and then you can go up to five kg. So it's good for starters. Mm. I mean, if you're just starting out, you're not going to start with something really heavy. Otherwise, you could have muscle sprains. Mm. So you start with like the lowest one, which is. 1 kg, 1.5, and then you can build on it, you can do 2 kg, 3, and then go up to 5. The instructor was using a 5 kg, which okay. is quite heavy. So what we just saw, you were just working the arms only? Yes. Okay. The arms, the upper body as well, because oh. you work your back muscles with that as well, and then there were some squats in there for the legs too. Oh. Mm -hmm. Very quickly, um, how effective is it if you're not following the moves the way the instructor wants? You, well, it's Why easy did you to smile? Follow. Because when you first start out, you really do, you, you make a mess of it. But because the instructors are very patient, they take you, you know, on how you should do the moves so that you can get the best from it. And then the music helps. So it's not as, as, as drudgy as, you know, without music. Without music, that would have been like punishment. But the music was soothing, so it makes it easier. And then you just follow the rhythm of the music. And there are mirrors in front as well, oh. so you can actually see if you're doing it properly or not. So it's quite easy to follow. A very good workout for the arms, yes, especially if you have heavy arms, that will help to reduce, you know, the arm fat on them. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Those dumbbells are deceiving. They are. They actually, after a while, holding them for like three, four minutes, you feel the weight. They're not as light as you, you would, would think. think. Yeah. <laughs> and I do not want to be you in that workout. <laughs> it was good, it was good. Ongashas will be right back after these messages. <laughs> a little helping hand will go a long way to get your meals tasting really delicious. So season your cooking with anger for that delicious taste and mm, irresistible aroma that will get your loved ones looking forward to mealtimes. Mm, Welcome back to Ongashus. Our wellness focus for today is constipation. I'm sure we've all been constipated at one point in time or the other. And we have an expert to talk to us about it, how we can, you know, manage it if we find ourselves constipated. Dr. Ekere is a consultant ga um, gastroenterologist and he's on the line to talk to us. Hello, Dr. Good day to you too. So what is constipation? Constipation, I will try and explain what it is. I will mention three, three uh, six reasons and two or more of these uh, conditions will mean the person has or the individual has constipation. One of them, if the person passes to less than three times in a week or the person passes hard stools, straining while passing stools, feeling of incomplete evacuation or feeling complete, that sensation of not passing stool completely, evacuating is bad or having a sensation of acid as an obstruction in the bowels as it passes it through. Or if the patient does manually try to evacuate the stool themselves. So out of these six conditions I've given, if they meet two or more of these conditions, we'll say this person or individual has constipation. So what are the causes of constipation? The causes of constipation include the following. The diet, the kind of food the patient eats, if the food has low 
person eat this food and takes little or no water, it could co cause constipation. But the person just say coldly liquid diet for long periods, it could also cause constipation. Or women who are pregnant, depending usually at the second or the last trimester, they could also have constipation. There are some these or people who have food who eat food with low fiber, they also have constipation. There are disease conditions so that can cause constipation. People have diabetes mellitus. People have thyroid diseases. Those are the swelling they have in the front part of their neck. If it is hyperthyroidism, it's working more than usual, or hypothyroidism, working less than usual, particularly the lower part, working lower than the normal function, could have constipation. Spinal cord diseases are some of the conditions people who have and they, that make present with constipation. In some cases, psychological issues, people who have depression, personality, eating problems, may also have problems with, may also complain of constipation. And how is it treated? The treatment of constipation will be determined by a few factors. First and foremost, what exactly is causing the constipation will be how you treat them. For people who eat food with little or no water, we encourage them to eat a lot, drink a lot of water as they eat to encourage the stool to, be, to, to reduce or stop uh, constipation. People who eat low fiber, so we encourage them to eat high fiber, have a high fiber diet, that would also prevent constipation or reduce it to its best minimum. Those who are on particular drugs, the drugs could be changed to other drugs that may not cause constipation. Diseases like diabetes or hypothyroidism in those cases, they can be adequately treated or managed. It will reduce the, you know, reduce the, the cost, reduce the prevalence of constipation in these people. And for those who have psychological problems, we we'll encourage them also to, you know, when they see their doctors, they are treated. When these things are no longer there, the incidence of constipation is reduced. And lifestyle changes. We encourage people to who live sedentary lifestyle, those who sit in places for a long period, encourage them to, you know, do exercises if they can. Those who, who also we encourage to, to eat, like I've mentioned earlier, fiber, that fiber diet, diet, increased dietary fiber is an important aspect in trying to treat and prevent constipation. Wow, thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you again for having me. I heard him mention uh, fiber in your diet and mm -hmm. I was wondering, could you tell us <clears throat> examples of fiber? Vegetables are one of the best ways you can get fiber. Cooked? Cooked or uncooked. Okay. Because a lot of the um, constituents of vegetables is not digested. So the body just uses it as fiber. It helps you know, the digestive system to pass out the waste easily. Fruits as well have lots of fiber. Gary is very, has, is high fiber because a lot of the cassava is actually not digested. So things like that are very important. Fruits, vegetables, beans is one of the best foods for fiber because the skin isn't digested. It just, you know, helps with the passage of food in the gut, so. I've heard say, um, oh, I'm constipated and the answer comes, take oranges. Yes, because oranges have a lot of pulp, and that pulp is fiber. Mm -hmm. It helps to actually sweep out the, <laughs> the guts and helps you go to the toilet easily. Have a lot of fruits do that. Heard of the colonic? Colonic wash, yes. yes. Some people, so what they do is they actually, through the back passage, yes. pass some water and then allow the water to, to wash out. Hmm. Some people say, or oh, a colonic cleanse, it helps them to feel better, takes out the toxins from their system. It's a bit controversial because most medical people don't believe that it's necessary. But people who do it and people who recommend it can testify that it has some benefits. So you would term that more as a cosmetic recommendation? No, not necessarily. It's more of um, an alternative medical therapy. Ah, okay, okay, yes. I get that. But there are sometimes when maybe a procedure needs to be done medically that requires the person to have that colonic washout done before the procedure. Oh. Yes, but most of the time people, it's okay if you can just eat healthily, take lots of water, take lots of fruits and vegetables in your diet. 
you may not need to do a colonic washout but people I mean everyone has their choices so if they feel it's you know something that they want to do it's not totally harmful or dangerous but some other people would say that it's not necessary mm -hmm. and thank you so much for that you are the good doctor yeah hmm. no one is happy when they're constipated mm -hmm. the easiest way to avoid this is to have lots of fiber yes fruits vegetables fruits, water vegetables water mm -hmm. anything else beans beans, of beans. Yeah. take orange as <laughs> yeah it's a very good remedy say, mm -hmm. mommy i'm constipated take, take orange. oranges yes and not Orgashas. just the juice you eat the whole pulp of the, the whole pulp yes not okay, the orange so it's not take orange it's chew, chew orange exactly <laughs> <laughs> Ongashos will be right back after these messages. We want it tasty, we want it creamy, we want to nourish it. Love your milk, deliciously creamy, with all the goodness of Vitarich. That's how we've made the new Cowbell Evaporated Milk. Cowbell Evaporated Milk. Evaporated just for you. You're still watching On Gashos, Nigeria's family magazine and culinary show. And now let's welcome our guests to talk to us today about children, manners, and respect. We have Buki Odushote with us, our expert. You're most welcome, Ma. Thank you very it's much. It's nice for to that see care. you again. You look lovely as usual. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And you look beautiful as well. Oh, well thank you very much. <laughs> and thanks once again for having me. Right. It's always lovely to come on your show. Thank you. How do you determine an ill-behaved child? Um, I would start by saying no child was born to be ill-behaved. Um, but what is most important is um, our background mm -hmm. and the values that have been you know, imbibed in a child from when they are brought up. Mm. Um, there's this popular adage that says charity begins at home. And there's a reason why they have that. I mean, though children go to school, but then they start from home. You know, you find out that you learn the one, two, threes, the ABCs from when you're growing up. So how do you determine an ill-mannered child? I think it's all down to the parents. And like I said, um, a child is not set out to be ill-mannered, but you can do what you do not know. So you need information first you know, on how to tread, because of course the child is only new to the world, and because they don't know what is right from what is wrong, so they need, definitely need someone to put them right. Mm -hmm. So if the right values are set there for the child, then you're 100% sure that you're going to be growing a child who is definitely well behaved. What are the things that you should teach your child when they, when they want to behave, or how they relate to adults? so that they know to be respectful. Um, thank you for the question again. Um, there's this um, survey that was done by Harvard University that says 80% of the skills, you know, that we require to be successful in life, you know, it's um, all based on our skills. And so it's very important that when you're bringing up a child, you need to put the right, um, you need to tutor them the right way, tell them the right things to do so that when they grow up, you know, even like the Bible says, they would not depart from it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, the, the, it's, it's down to the parents to ensure that, you know, you, you groom your child the way that you know is proper. But we're in a world today that is very diverse. Mm -hmm. And so you find out that, you know, we have quite a number of um, Nigerian children who live abroad, China, all over. And you do have quite a number as well who are here. So it's about understanding the culture of where you are and being able to walk yourself, you know, according to that culture, embrace it. So it's not just really in your own circle of 
um, influence where it's well on Yoruba for instance and it's only prostrate when you want to greet an elder but also when you go to a place where you know that they're not like that you must be able to you know stand tall for instance if you're if you're in a foreign country I mean they expect eye contact you know mm -hmm. so you want to be able to teach your child to be able to maintain the eye contact you know to have that confident behavior and you know the handshakes and just sort of have that courtesy for adults mm -hmm. so it's basically being able to um, groom your child in a way that when they step out of your home you know they're definitely fine and confident to move around talking about courtesy for adults um, there's this uh, it's I think it's almost in every home you have a visitor and your children decide that is the right time to sit and watch TV. Is it ideal to allow them sit through what is the proper way to exit them and how do you re-educate them? Um, thank you once again for the question. Um, as far as that is concerned, children will always be children. But one thing you have to realize, like I said at the beginning, is that there's no child who is set out to be ill-mannered. But it all depends on what the child is being fed as far as um, discipline is concerned. Mm. So I think it's something that you need to let your children know from a young age. Um, one thing that is really key, you know, a value that everybody needs to have is respect, as you've said it today here and now, and I think you've said it over and over again. So it's respecting and respect, you know, like I think it's nice that sang that song that respect is reciprocal, and that's very correct. In as much as you respect your children, your children ought to respect you so that way if you have a guest your children should know that mommy has a guest daddy has a guest and of course they need some time together and I need to get up and go and do my own thing and then I can return once the guests have gone mm. so at that age you need to let them realize that when mommy's got guests you know you've got to give mommy time to spend time with our guests it's called um, respect and giving each other your space and then that way the child grows up to understand. So you don't even need to tell them when they see an adult walk into the house, they get up immediately and they're leaving, mm -hmm. you know, and they only show up when you want them to. So mm -hmm. I think it's quite important to, you lay quite. the foundation. Yeah, yes. quite important. What about as regards to food? Is it appropriate for kids to take food and drinks without taking permission from their parents or? I mean, is that respectful or not? As far as um, food is concerned, I think it depends on what operates in every home. Um, but for me, the way I've groomed my children, I always say to them, it's always good to ask. Now, reason being, when you're used to not asking, now when you go to someone else's house, it's so easy for you to just believe that, well, we don't ask before we take things, so we just take it. Mm. And so that way they get carried away and then they can open someone else's fridge. Maybe it's the last the Maltina or bottle of Coke there and they drank it and then meanwhile, the owner of the drink comes and they want it and they can't have it. Mm. So it's very important. I think it's, it's, it's really, really important to let your children know to always ask. And it's also part of consideration, which is very key to our daily living. You know, be considerate towards one another. Find out, you know, if that person needs it as much as you do before you take it. And when they say it's okay to have it, then you can have it. But not to just, um, you know, with your own discretion, just grab the drink and, you know, take, take it. What you want. So one needs to, to really um, ensure that, you know, you teach them such things so that they know what to do. Thank you so much, Buki, for Thank being you. with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Teaching your kids manners is not a gift. It is something you give to them that will stay with them for the rest of their lives something they would want to pass on to their own kids. Let's keep that alive and let's think about it deeply. Ongashos will be right back. Here comes the sun. The taste and aroma of top tea can leave you feeling good and ready to go, just like sunshine. Top tea also comes in ginger, lemon and lime and pure black tea. So go ahead, take a sip and feel the sunshine in every cup. Top tea. 
big bags of flavor. It's still your show on Gashas, and it's time for our guest cook to come in. She's right here, her name is Sekinat. We're always happy to see our guest cook because it means that food is on the way. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome to Ongashas. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, it's great to have you. Welcome, dear. How are you today? I'm fine. You're very shiny today. Thank yes, you very much. I like love I your dress. Step away. Yes. Thank you very, very much. Very pretty. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what do you do for a living? A business. Business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're cooking for us today? Yes, ma'am. Yes. I don't know. Don't feel threatened by our state-of-the-art kitchen over there. Oh, wow. Well, what do you think? Oh, God. <laughs> Fabulous. Oh, she thinks it's fabulous now. Mm -hmm. Wait until you enter and you start using the stuff in there. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I heard you're cooking something that I have never tried. Mm -hmm. And I like to try new stuff with the exception of some new stuff. I would love to try that. But before we get to pushing you into the kitchen, I would like my lovely audience to please Join me in welcoming a very accomplished man in media, our celebrity of the week. Ah, 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 don't Gracias. Yes, sir. That was a beautiful entrance. Another mm -hmm. round of applause for Alaji. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. No problem. <laughs> okay, before we get far, Alaji, our team at, um, uh, at Ongashos here took a trip somewhere that um, is special to you and I'm sure a lot of people out there and in here. Please have a look.
Ofa is the second largest town in Kwari State. The land was founded by Ololomi Olofa Ganga, a hunter, but he was not just an ordinary hunter. Ololomi was a crown prince from Oyo and a direct descendant of King Oromiya of Ileife. Olofa Ganga is a nickname which describes Olalomi's weapons of war, the bow and arrow, and his great skill as an archer. In ancient period, Ofa people engaged in various commercial activities, ranging from farming to craftwork such as weaving, pot making, and calabash decoration. They also had skillful blacksmiths and goldsmiths. Ijaka de Lorofa, wrestling is our game, is the praise name of Ofa. These are no mere words. Ijakadi is traditional wrestling and an integral part of the culture of Ofa people that has ascended generations. The genesis of Ijakadi was a fight between two illustrious sons of Ofa. And the wrestling as a sport was enacted during Moremi festival that subsequently became Ijakadi festival. Ofa is well known for cultivation of sweet potatoes. In one of her oriki, a Yoruba eulogy, it is referred to as a home of sweet potatoes. The yam pounding is not complete until we add the sweet potato. I'm a of the gushi and And that's why they always say it that along uh, Panama. I heard you singing when the video began. Wow. You're welcome again, sir. Thank you very much. This lady here, her name is Sekina. Yes, Sekina. And she is here for you. Good. Can you tell Alaji what you are here for? Alaji, I'm here to prepare you an omo, an omo potato. An this omo this reminds me of another popular uh, song from Ofa too. When we hear Anama, we always remember Anama ulunje etawa, Anama ulunje etawa. Ni yero okio omabi lofa. Anama ulunje ilu baba me asomo okio olofa majo. Anama ulunje etawa. It's good. There is no of a man or indigent that we do away with animal. One, it's medicinal. Two, it supplies the natural glucose that the, the, the medical officers will recommend for people to take. So when you are eating animal, there are lots of ingredients there that supply the necessary body built ingredient naturally. Without So Sakina, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. She's not going. <laughs> Please, Ubi, release her. Let her go. Come and make the... For the sake of Alaji. Yeah, so we don't keep it. Alaji with... Yusuf, do you give me permission to allow her to Please, go to the kitchen? Please, release her to come and make the... Oh, yeah, my Thank my you very much. You know what to hang out. Introducing the new Onga Ginger Onion and Garlic Powder Seasoning. Now you can give your fish, chicken and beef the unique taste all in just one sachet. Onga. Onga. Mama's helping hand. Introducing the new Onga Ginger Onion and Garlic Powder Seasoning. Now you can give your fish, chicken and beef the unique taste all in just one sachet. Onga. Onga. Mama's helping hand. Welcome back. 
We are in the Ongasha's kitchen and Sekinat is about to make anomo for us, right? Which yeah. is sweet potato pottage. What are the things we need to make? That's the sweet potato, I guess. Yes. Okay. Why is it peeled? Oh, it's been peeled? Yeah. Right. And what else do we have to use? Tomato, pepper, tache, which you've pepper, already blended yes, here. Blended and one. Okay. Onions, fish. Okay. You've already cooked it. All right. And this is meat. Meat. Okay. This is boiled fish. Yes. Looks like mackerel. I yes. Tight uh, fish. Tight fish. Okay. And what else are you going to put in it? Wheat. Then uh, vegetable oil. Okay. So you use vegetable Wheat. oil for it. Our spice. Our onga spices. Yeah. All right. Salt, pepper. Yes. To taste. And okay. fish. Okay. So it looks like a very simple dish to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So let's get started. Talking about the sweet potato, Alaji was telling us that it's so nutritious. Yes. It's full of vitamins. Very, 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 very I know it nutritious. contains a lot of vi vitamin A, I'm told. Yeah. And then I know. They asked a lot of time, people recommend it for people who have diabetes because yes. it doesn't raise the blood sugar as much as other carbohydrates. Yes. That's nice. And it is easy to digest. Very easy to digest. Yeah. Hmm. That's great. Hi over there. Who are you? Alaji Akujoko. How are you doing, Omi? Not bad, thank We're you good. very much. I just learned that you can actually make pap out of sweet potato. potato. Really? Pap? Yeah. Amazing. And apparently it is um, a contributing factor to the longevity of a lot of people from Ofa. People in Ofa, who yes. live in Ofa. Yes. Wow. He told me that um, they would eat the pounded yam version of the sweet potato. In the, in the night. In the night. And reserve some. And then they leave a little bit of leftover, mm. which they turn into pap in the morning. In the morning. Interesting. It also solves back problem. Back problems? Yes. Wow. That's really good. So I guess we should be eating more of sweet potatoes. I mean, we, we eat a lot of Irish potatoes, but I don't think people eat as much sweet potatoes as, as, they, should. as they should. Exactly. exactly. So I, I guess it's a healthier alternative. It is a healthier potatoes. alternative, and it's much, much cheaper than Irish potato. Oh, really? Yes. 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 Great, great stuff. So I'll we'll leave you to it while we try and focus on Yes, that. please, yeah. quickly cook that thing. All right. You okay. grew up in Ofasa. Yes, my sister. Hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about that? I had my primary education in of uh, Ansaruddin Primary School. Ansaruddin Primary School. Okay. okay. Then uh, I went to for my secondary school education of a community secondary school. Thereafter, I went to uh, Ansaru Islam Secondary School Ipe, and thereafter I proceeded to uh, College of Education Ilorin to obtain my NC. Okay. Then thereafter. I obtained a degree, a B.S. Ed. and Labra information from University of Adukiti. That's Bachelor of Science. Yes. I didn't stop there. Uh, today, uh, I'm a registered journalist and a member of Correspondent Chapel of Kwara State uh, because I obtained a postgraduate diploma in journalism from uh, International Institute of Journalism, affiliated mm -hmm. to University of Medigo. Oh! That's very interesting. So we, we've we seen a little bit of Ofa up on our screen. Yes. But could you tell us a little bit about Ofa? A lot, a lot. That town you are seeing, it's a role model. It is everything to all of our indigenous, both at home and in diaspora. Mm. Because wherever you see of our indigenous, if you happen by apostles meet them, uh, they've worked in circular and non-circular state of the federation with one quality of our people love honesty, they love equity and justice. Where these three things are not there and you are working with them, no way there will be problem along the line. And that is why they say Ijakad Lurofa. Our only Ijakad Lurofa is not that we fight people or that we engage in fighting war there and there. No, 
it is just the the wrestling game is our symbol mm. but of course mm -hmm. do you think if you are dealing with someone even let's say your home now if your husband is not fair with you you don't see that honesty in his life and uh, do, would you take it from him no of course that's what of our people stand for <laughs> so with these three things on ground Wherever you meet any of our indigenous, they are hardworking. They're very hardworking. And that's what puts them in a very sensitive position across the Federation. Uh, let me start with you. The first medical doctor in the whole northern Nigeria comes from of our in person of uh, Chief Jonathan Duro Suleye. Baba has a very good hospital in Lagos. We call it Duro Sule Hospital. Okay. Aside that, we have uh, an industrialist too, who has just passed on in person of Chief uh, Emmanuel Olatunji Adesoye. <laughs> the first private college, uh, if not in the whole uh, central Nigeria, let's say, in Ofa and maybe part of Southwest here. It's called Adesoye College, College yes. where the majority of prominent Nigerians put their children. Mm -hmm. So this is a handwork of our people. Aside that, um, we have uh, uh, Chairman Chief Executive Putty Hotel in person of Chief Basoro of Ofa, Alaji Tajudin Awoyemi, mm -hmm. who runs Putty Hotel Ikoi. Proti Hotel Ikeja, Proti Hotel, I think, Lagos Island, and so many. He has Avalon Hotel also in Nova. So they offer people, thank you very much. So, Alaji Yusuf, you are the uh, media and publicity, publicity officer, officer to, to His Royal Majesty, the Olofa of Ofa. The Olofa yes. of Ofa. You want to tell us a little bit about that position? I will tell you where I started. On his pronouncement as a law in 2010. The That's first, the current? Yes, the current. Is the, the current Oba Mufta by Ramasio Kikiola is so Ikeji. As a is the 24th law of Ufa and the current one. Yes, when it was uh, pronounced by the state government sometime in 2010, the first assignment he did was that he demolished the entire palace. I'm going to stop you there, even though I'm shocked, but I'm going to stop you there. We need to go to break. I will, when we come back, I'm going to pick up from there because there's something that I want to ask. Good. Yes. You're watching on Gashos, and we will be back after these messages. Introducing the new Onga Ginger Onion and Garlic Powder Seasoning. Now you can give your fish, chicken and beef the unique taste all in just one sauce. Mm. Onga. Onga. Mama's helping hand. Introducing the new Onga ginger onion and garlic powder seasoning. Now you can give your fish, chicken and beef the unique taste all in just one sauce. Onga. Onga. Mama's helping hand. Welcome back. We are in the Ongasha's kitchen and Sekina is taking us through how to make a normal offer style. So we have our meat here. Yeah. We've cut up our sweet potatoes. Yeah. Can you take us through, darling? Yeah, mm -hmm. we're about to put three fish inside this. Okay, that's yeah. the sweet potato. The yes. Onion. Then what's this pot for? We are uh, making a stew. Okay. To garnish it with our porridge. 